Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an Evolutionary Astrologer and this is the Evolutionary Astrology message for the week between June 29th and July 6th, 2019. We are heading into a great total eclipse. It's not going to be seen in America, just over the South Pacific, but it's a strong eclipse nevertheless. It happens in the 10th degree of Cancer on July 2nd and it's going to be opposed by Saturn squared by Chiron and sextile by Uranus so you know I just heard a new song by Madonna this morning the words off were they're pretty horrible not everybody's going to the future not everybody's coming from the past not everybody's going to the future a lot of people this year are not going to last these are horrible lyrics, but they're true. We are going through very transformational times. The amount of great conjunctions through these years is dense. And the world is going faster forward than we can actually catch up. We've been running behind this dog sled for a long time and each time we catch our breath and get to where it's standing the dogs pick up and start running again leaving us nothing but powder and we have to accept that the world is moving forward faster than we could take in faster than we could you know it's like sand running through our fingers or water running through our fingers it's not in our control and we need to enjoy the excitement and let go, you know, as flexible as we'll be, the better. <clears throat> and people who are not going to adapt are going to fall on the sidelines. So the weaker ones, the old, the children, the, you know, the, the people who, who are less privileged, a lot of these people are going to suffer people who don't have a will to walk forward and adapt will suffer more because the changes are going to be great in the next few years and adapting to them is going to be a challenge for everyone of us so in these very transformational and turbulent years we have really two choices Either we want to tumble in this washing machine, you know, or we could be the ones trying to ride this wave, helping others to ride it as well, providing light and comfort and guidance. And each and every one of you listening to this video has to choose who are you going to be in this scenario? Who are you going to be in the next 20 critical years? Each and every one of you listening to this video, each and every one of you listening to this video, breathing here on this earth at this time, that's no mistake that we came here as a group, as a generation, living on this earth at the same time, choosing, deciding, what is going to happen not only to ourselves but to generations to come to the unborn not only of our species but of so many others our choices will decide between a golden age of peace and catastrophe we actually get to choose to save the world or not. Like in all the movies we've seen as children. That's why they spoke to our hearts so much because here we are. Here we are facing that actual decision. Will we save the world? Will we save our world will you save yours so I've digressed 
So, I digress. Let's go back to this time and space. We're heading into this eclipse in 10th degree off Cancer. And it's a time of great change. Every solar eclipse is a new moon. So whatever I say about new moons and that the energy that passes through us at that time is imprinted to the next lunar cycle is even more true and much more potent and strategic in its effect. So not the next lunar cycle, but the next six months or even a year are having this imprint of the times energies, vibrations that you were going through throughout the last few weeks and the next few weeks. And of course, at the time of the eclipse, times of eclipse are times that great changes can happen in our lives that have irrelevance to time and space. We could go through a vast change in a very short time. And in order for these to be positive, we need to work with eclipses and we need to check how this eclipse in the 10th degree of Cancer speaks with our chart. Does it hit one of our nodal axes or one of our personal planets or lights? In which house does it fall? Does it create an angle to any important point or planet? And that's how we know how they affect us and how we should work with them. You could either study astrology yourself and know how to do it, or you can utilize a site like astro.com and see your natal chart and see where the transits fall. Or you can consult a, a professional astrologer like me or someone else, and they may help you find out how this speaks to you in your life. But knowing that knowledge helps us prepare emotionally and psychologically. So what is this eclipse talking about, generally, without how it places itself in your natal chart? It's on the Cancer-Capricorn axis. It opposes Saturn and very broadly Pluto too. It squares Chiron and sextiles Uranus. So this is a time that we need to adapt to the changes within what? Between these two poles of our obligations in our personal intimate circles to our family and our obligations on the broader, more exterior circles to the world in our career. These two poles could be in great tension right now. Who we are needed to be and who we want to be who we are asked to be and who we w wish we can be with our children maybe at home instead of at the office, you know. So the tension between these two poles can rise at this time and we need to mature and rise up to the occasion and take responsibility and organize things in place. It's about laying down the rules. It's about uh, 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 honing the edges and making this a more exact system, you know, it's about taking away what isn't needed. With the sextile to Uranus, we are asked for an advancement, we are asked for an upgrade, utilizing it in a more exact way. And the square to Chiron can bring up a lot of personal pain, emotional pain from the past, you know, Chiron and Saturn are the two most karmatic planets. So, talking about dealing with unfinished karma in this eclipse has a great signature. If we have unfinished business in our lives, in our psyche, it's a very emotional, psychological axis, the Capricorn Cancer axis. If we have unfinished business with these kinds of things, they're going to come up now. If we have unfinished business with regarding family, or regarding our work, they're going to come up now. They're going to come up now in order for us to grow and transcend. Furthermore, a lot of astrologers talk about it, and it seems to be correct from my own personal experience. Um, the Cancer 
Capricorn axis being about different sexes, being about the male patriarch and the female, you know, the feminine figure, intuitive feminine figure, and sex change between feminine and masculine and vice versa. And we can see a lot of things coming up with trans rights, with uh, um, putting down a more exact, better system regarding the sexes and the genders. There are all kinds of new questions, problems, things to be dealt with and organized in place because we are no longer two dichotomic, polaric, different genders. You know, it's now a spectrum. In the age of, of Aquarius, we are all in a gender spectrum, you know, and we could be anywhere along that spectrum at any time. It's fluid, you know. I could be a straight male guy one day, gay the next, maybe trans in a few years, you know. It all depends on how I feel and who I want to be. That's what it's all about. And the expression of individuality and non-conformity. This is what this age is about. And we're going to be faced with more problems and, and, and need for structure in these new areas, like in sports, for instance. The more transgender people there are in sports, the more there's going to be a need to systemize uh, uh, how uh, transgender people, you know, are, are categorized in sports, you know, because in some sports they're now protesting, like in, in wrestling. We have transgender wrestlers, you know, who were male and are now female, but they're still bigger bodied, more mass, heavily built than the female ones. Naturally, you know, biologically. So the female contestants, maybe rightly so, say it isn't fair. You know, they're not our equals. And it's a question. It brings up ethical and moral questions to the table and the needs for systemization, for putting parameters down. And we can take that into our own lives at this time. If there are things that are not well systemized or exacted, the need to exact those is going to come up, and it can come up in an old painful way. <laughs> you know, a known painful, a known painful, painful way as well. You know, or sensitive way. Don't be alarmed. That's for our own good and healing. At the end of the day. So let's go down to the weekdays and see how things happen. So Saturday, the 29th, wonderful day. Wonderful night, to be, wonderful day to be outside. Wonderful day to be very in charge of your energies and, and, and very active. And just enjoying yourself. Sunday has a bit of a past paced, fast paced with the moon in Gemini. Um, not such a satisfactory day and Monday isn't as well. We have to be careful from overindulgence late Sunday and Monday and just not making decisions out of feeling alone, just involve logic in your decision making. And then Tuesday, the second, we have the moon in the sign of Cancer conjunct Venus and a little later on Mars moves into the sign of Leo. When Mars moves into the sign of Leo we can all become too proud, we can become more brave with our actions and benevolent as well and we need to push it towards that direction. But we can become too sure of ourselves and even sure that what we're pursuing is the most important thing on earth and everybody needs to help us and join our cause and we need to be careful not to do that of course anytime the moon and venus are joined it's a good time but we have to remember that this venus is opposed by jupiter and squared by neptune at this time and this t-square is getting power from the moon 
so uh, things can come up again you know with illusionment in relationships and uh, what is practical what is realistical and disillusionment you know it's about not overdoing it and not overindulging and then we have the um, solar eclipse at 10 degrees 38 minutes off cancer Posing Saturn, squaring Chiron, sextiling Uranus. We talked about it in the beginning. Wednesday the 3rd, Moon opposes Saturn and Pluto. Sensitive day. Be aware of your own judgment. Be aware not to judge others. Not to be too dramatic on that day. And Venus moves into Cancer by the end of the day. And Venus in Cancer appreciates intimacy and a sense of belonging that has nothing to do with how my bank account is doing or how well I did in school or how well I did at work or how many friends I have. Just because I belong and I'm loved. So intimacy and kinship is getting heightened throughout the next month and being with family and people who are close to you is good on thursday the fourth be careful not to be too proud the moon is conjunct that mars in leo that we talked about before it's a talkative day it's a talkative day with a lot of information and not a lot of patience so be tolerant on thursday the fourth friday wonderful day to enjoy yourselves to go outside, to expand your mind, to study, to be involved with things in spirit and in arts. And Saturday, you could take things uh, into your own hands at home, fix things, clean things as the moon is in Virgo, sextiling Venus, um, or just, you know, enjoy a good workout or a healthy meal, as there's a sextile to Venus at that time as well. So, we're having an advanced group in English over the net starting in the next week and a half. If you want to join, this is the time to call me. And of course, a beginner group in mid-July. Again, internet from wherever you are around the world with me personally training you from scratch. And by the end of that course, you can open up a natal chart by yourself. So, if you want to join, contact me now. Thank you for sharing these videos and commenting on them. And may we all fly through this with flying colors. May we take ourselves where we've never dared to take ourselves before and only grow and transcend and become better because of it. May we be humble and thankful always and satisfied always. May we live long and prosper. Amen.